Yeah, so you're not score master asks, uh, Miss Tardis, do you think Jody will do big finish or will get an impersonator like Matt Smith? I honestly, I think that Jody Whittaker, having recently um, had a as yet now born child, not a as yet unborn child, as an actual child that is now born, I think that she would massively appreciate being able to earn a living and some income whilst maybe working from home or recording from home or doing some audio projects. I think that we'll get Jodie Whittaker doing Big Finish a lot earlier than we've got uh, like Matt Smith, uh, uh, Peter Capaldi, who still have yet to do Big Finish despite their tenures as, as the Doctor being over for a long time, uh, all relative, of course. I think that Jodie Whittaker will join before uh, before Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi do. Um, yeah, I think that she probably would have... Uh, Maybe she wants to take some time from the show, though. That's completely understandable. There was Doctor Who Redacted, of course. She's got a small role in that. Uh, but I think that was maybe like an afternoon recording on her end while she was still pregnant. But I think that, yeah, I think that she'll join relatively soon. Uh, but if they do do, do do, if they do do Impersonator, Wendy Abrahams is, in my opinion, the uncontested person to do it. Um, she is... By far and away, as far as I've seen, the best um, 13th Doctor impressionist uh, around. Uh, and I was absolutely honoured to have her as part of my Collateral of Ivanhoe project. Or suggestion, to be fair, she wanted to do it straight away. She could have just stayed on telly law. There is, on, there is a difference, though, definitely between the workload and the work requirements and the time commitment. Big Finish records one story a day. Um, they... they uh, because sometimes, like, for example, for like a four-part box set, they'll have four days to record to record it. You can record. Jody could record one Doctor Who story in a day, whereas recording it for TV for the BBC would take weeks, bordering on months. Ben Miller, mine would be Ali E. Tori. I've only heard a bit of Alia's Thirteenth Doctor. I don't. Alia is an incredibly gifted voice actor i don't think 13's her strongest though i think if if for whatever reason big finish were to be like ali you can only do maybe two or three roles with us i i wouldn't have one of them be the 13th doctor i would have her do something else uh like have her be missy but michelle gomez is, is up for big finish um vastra i don't think yeah neve mcintosh she does do big finish but she didn't do redacted Ross suggestion, true, but, uh, I mean, she'll probably want to step away from the role for a bit first. Yeah, that's the bit, that's the variable that is impossible for myself or anybody else in this chat or watching this live stream to consider and know about. It, it, it's completely up to her. We kind of forget that, you know, actors are people. Uh, I know there's the brilliant line in Paddington 2 where the, the grandmother's like, actors are the most evil, despicable, diabolical people ever. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very funny line, uh, but we they are people. <laughs> so if she wants to take five years away from the 13th Doctor and then step back for like, step back in for um, an on-camera appearance of Big Finish, that's completely down to her and we should absolutely respect that. And I think Big Finish should also respect that as well. If Jodie Whittaker does not want to do Doctor Who, for Big Finish, by the end of 2023, uh, by, between now and the end of 2023 or 2024, I say don't do anything with the 13th Doctor and Big Finish until then, and then ask her again and see where we are. Jodie Whittaker would be an incredible end of Victoria Wood biopic guaranteed after. Which one's Victoria Wood? Sorry, this is me being very... Oh, yeah, of course she would. Oh, she'd be very good as Victoria Wood. She's even got, this, she's even got like a similar smile. Yeah, and Jodie Whittaker, I think, as a performer, has very few, like, inhibitions. I think she will do whatever she thinks looks best on camera, or make herself look incredibly expressive, or idiosyncratic, just for the benefit of the character, and for the shot, and for the story. And I think that type of commitment to a role would really work for Victoria Wood. I think that Jodie Whittaker is, hands down one of the most expressive doctors. Like, you can talk whatever you want about characterization. Like, you can talk about that till the cows come home. But I think she's up there with Patrick Troughton, um, Sylvester McCoy, and probably David Tennant, in terms of the most visibly, facially expressive doctors. And, like, Patrick Troughton. You could honestly just watch The Web of Fear 
and the scene when he's underneath the sewer track and the yeti are coming in he's hiding from them is like a masterclass in physical performance and facial expression it's 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 terrific you could like teach a class on that now my dog types are whining about a scrunchy face or something oh yeah yeah don't like also don't forget that the the venn diagram between yeah, uh, people who like hate Jodie Whittaker's Doctor for bigoted reasons, and people who would be absolutely fine with her if she was much more like supermodel, gorgeous, or conventionally attractive. That's like that's like a that's practically a circle. If you had someone who was way more like not saying that Jodie Whittaker is not beautiful, but if you had someone who was much more conventionally attractive, like supermodel, gorgeous, uh, like with 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 big booba and b flowing curly hair or something, th these criticisms would not be happening. I think because Jodie Whittaker is is completely fearless as a performer, especially if you watch films like Adult Life Skills, where she's terrific. That's like her at the comedic top of her game as a performer. Watch Adult Life Skills. Uh, yeah, because she's unafraid to take those creative decisions uh, as a performer. Um, Paradis Equilibrium, most expressive Doctor, and exclude Matt Smith. When I, I wanted to include a revived series Doctor, maybe Matt Smith is the one to go for. I think that Peter Capaldi um, is... A, I think most of Peter Capaldi's considerations as a performer came vocally i think he is of course an incredibly expressive actor uh, you don't get eyebrows like that and not be an expressive actor of course not but i do think a lot of his uh it, it is cadence i think and it's his poise where he hold the way he physically holds himself i think the facial expressions not saying he he's he's bland or boring but i think that he's taken different priorities as a performer that worked for him and works for different actors and different performers lonely spark capaldi would be great for big finish a thousand percent fall of the 11th and 9 when he confronts the dalek great acting yeah i i agree i also think eccleston and i only know this because we've had conversations not me personally but there have been behind the scenes talks and documentaries and podcasts and discussions and stuff uh, about the filming of of series one and we know that eccleston was not afraid to experiment and it's why he loved working with directors like a ross lynn and joe Hearn that would let him <clears throat> experiment and mix things up as a performer because i think he, he's an actor's actor i think he thrives in that environment where it was in my dalek shot by shot vi uh, video where he was talking about filming the confrontation with the Dalek in the vault and how they even filmed one version of the of the scene where he was curled up in a ball out of fear of the Dalek by the door, uh, where he would like be running around it, uh, like mocking it when it's like chained in the center of the room. In the finished version, there's only really one shot where he circles the Dalek and it's when uh, he's like, what's the point of you? You're nothing. And I, 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 and I think that because um, Joe Ahern gave him the freedom to experiment and to really... Because I think they had like a whole day. Theo has just knocked something over in the kitchen. I think because they gave it like a full day or maybe two days to film that Metaltron cage scene, um, they really were able to experiment and play around with it and get it right. And that was how Eccleston was able to thrive in that scene. I'm not saying that other doctors, other actors wouldn't experiment, but like I said, we know this because we have the, um, we have the receipts. Alex Runa Composer, I'd love to see these alternate takes. Yeah, I would love to as well. I think th we do know that these rushes are out there and that they exist. There's a, there's a great chat with Graham Harper, the director for uh, a director for series two to four and the waters of mars he directed journey's end and the stolen earth and at warpcon he took rushes to uh, the convention to play them during a q a and he was talk and he was talking about um uh, julian bleach who played davros and there was an alternative take where he did the the monologue like every single like this is my ultimate victory doctor the cascades into the medusa cascade I, I, can't, I can't remember the quote i'm sorry but how um the, the alternate takes and the version that he showed at that convention had julian Be bleach do maybe a bit more shakespearean quiet like you know macbeth like type of like i don't know why macbeth's my frame of reference there uh, and when he played those rushes, the person to the right of me in the audience lent to me and said that take was so much better. 
I'm kind of inclined to agree as well, but obviously the director's word uh, and what take they go for, that's their word. And I trust those creative decisions. But So those alternate takes are probably out there. At least when the composer, I'm in the process of watching in Dalek Semba through and I just watched those alternate Davros takes. I love that quieter take on the Atom Switch. Is it in the Dalek Semba video? I thought I uploaded it. We'll watch it now. So, okay, so what we've got, we've got th these two cameras here. This is focusing on uh, David, uh, da David Piper, David Tennant and Billy Piper. And this is a camera like attached to Davros's chair, like a GoPro or Steadicam or something attached to his chair for a different angle. Here we go. Here's, th here's the alternate take. It's a take. <laughs> The destruction of reality itself. So Graham Harper's reasoning for for not using that take, or how he explained it during this QA, it was a terrific panel, terrific chat. Uh, Graham Harper's the gent on the left here. Um, he said that that moment there you saw where Julian Bleach kind of sunk in the chair a bit. He kind of got the sense that Julian wasn't happy with that take. Um, I don't know if there was like a formal communication, but you know, directors need to be have an eye for that. And I'm sure Graham does. So he went for, it was like, okay, I think you've got another take in you. Let's go for it. And then he did the take that's in the episode. Because if Graham Harper's got access to like rushes like that, I'm sure that there's more stuff like that in the archives for future collection sets or some future home media releases or something. Probably on the Lolly Lion Tavos just died after finishing his speech. He he's tired. He's been he's been in the makeup he's been in the makeup chair for a long time. I would love to see rushes of the waters of Mars. Like I wanna hear the un altered audio you know the wind machines blowing the fires on set the pyrotechnics going mad and david tennant and everyone's trying to shout over <laughs> over the explosions uh, those are rushes from graham harper that i'd love to see kind of like in this version it makes it seem like davros is almost me uh, melancholic about his plan with his head down and quiet delivery i'm so glad they went with the one they did with the davros revels in his plan yeah what's great is just being able to experiment and have the, the freedom to do that uh, like being able to um like just read the room of an actor as well i think that it, it's it's great that graham harper was able to sort of like sense in the moment i don't think julian was happy with that or i think that julian bleach has got another better one in him i think that those instincts as a as, as a director are, are almost essential to have because you forget when it like when it comes to working on a set and controlling a set when you're a director your primary creative responsibility is to get the best performance out of the actors being able to work with the actors the script for the most part is already said and done uh, you can improvise and stuff like that but the director kind of has to give you the freedom and the, the the environment to do that so i think when you have um a director like Graham Harper with those instincts, it really just benefits everybody involved and it also creates a, a better environment for actors to play. Uh, Jack Richardson, which is your favourite take out of the three, four, uh, the, the three that they did for I Don't Want to Go? The one they used. But that's a great idea as well. How, you know, David Tennant even has the authorship. I can't play the clip because it will get content ID and stuff, but he's chatting with A. Ross Lynn about, you know, which version of the take should I use? The one where a little bit of emotion, uh, one with a bit more emotion and one where it's completely breaking down. And I think the instincts there were completely right. Fall of the 11th, I really don't like the take where David is crying his eyes out. It's really weird. Yeah, agreed. I'm, I'm glad that they, because it's the regeneration scene. And outside of the pyrotechnics of the scene, it's a really short scene. Um, in a second. I'll play just that crying bit. The alternate takes. Because the scene in the end of Time Part 2 where he's in the TARDIS, but before he starts regenerating, he's, he's just walking around, he sets it to go... We, he's it's only a scene with one line of dialogue in it and they know the camera shot for it it's the one where they bring the camera in i don't want to go um so you you do have time to do the, at least a good production should have time to do those alternate takes here we go this is the the version an alternate version of i don't want to go <laughs> i don't want to go oh no i think that is the actual one i think i've messed up there have i have I messed up? Oh, yeah, 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 they did three different versions. That's the one they used. I want to go. Yeah, that's the one they used. Yeah, the, the, this is the super cryy one. 
I don't want to go. Yeah, and David Tennant's rationale is that if you see him breaking down, it kind of stops you from breaking down. And you know those those instincts as an actor as well about, about how it works with the uh, like how the audience is going to perceive the character. Uh, I think that those are good instincts to have. I still have an issue with the line itself. I think it's partly profound, but I do also think that you know you are regenerating into somebody else and you're immediately stacking the deck on that new person. Like, oh, my my doctor did not want to go, so I hate Matt Smith for taking him away from me. Um, it, it's why I love Eccleston's regeneration, how he goes out with a beaming smile. David Adrian, he sounds like a six-year-old being dragged to school in a big cry day. I know. <laughs> I'm poorly. <laughs> no, stop. Oh, so I think that John Pertwee and the other actors were allowed to mess around on set before doing the actual take. Yes, sometimes when you've got like even Tom Baker during an outtake is swearing at K9, knowing full well that he's the lead, he can't get told off. It's not good behavior and it's not good etiquette, but it makes for funny clips, I think. 